When most people think about Hawaii, art probably isn't the first thing that comes to mind. They think beautiful beaches, pretty girls, surfing, warm water. But when you think about it, art really makes a lot of sense here. My name is Flynn Helper. I'm an artist, an adventurer, and a foodie. Along with my cameraman, Isaac, we travel around finding people who create art at will. In past trips to Oahu, I spent most of my time in the water, which was awesome, but this is not going to be one of those trips. I've been invited by the University of Hawaii to be a visiting artist in their glass department. I'm excited yet apprehensive. It doesn't help that the visiting artist program, which was founded in 1989, has hosted groundbreaking glass artists such as Martin Blank, William Morris, Dante Marioni, and Dale Chavoy, pretty much a who's who of the glassblowing world. As I head into the glass department, I've got a lot on my mind. Anyways, this is Professor Rick Mills. He's the head of the glass department here. After he introduced me to his beginning glass blowing class, I've talked a little bit about the work we'd be making this week for the upcoming public installation. You'll get good experience just in here working the glass, and uh, it's good experience just uh, for your work in the future. Meet Mike Hengler. He's a good friend of mine and a talented artist currently enrolled in the graduate program here at the university. Mike and I spent years together blowing glass in Oregon, and I'll be relying on him a lot this week to help me with the installation. The plan is to make as many blown glass surfboards as we can in three days. At the end of the week, we'll be filling the boards with glow liquid and installing them at a beach just outside Waikiki. The first thing I have to do is gather up some glass on the end of a hollow pipe. After some quick cooling and shaping, I blow into it which creates a hollow bubble. Then I gather more glass around the bubble, blow it out, and set up the shape for the surfboard. After that I get the whole thing real hot and dunk it in water to create a crackle effect. Then I swing the glass around to stretch the shape out into a surfboard. A few final touches, a fin, a little water, and a quick tap, and we put the board in the kiln to slowly cool overnight. We kept making boards for a few hours, and it's going great. Even though it's been a year since I've blown glass, it still feels natural. Until I remember, my lecture's in half an hour, and I'm starting to think, maybe I should have practiced. Shit. Here I am. First lecture ever, and I've never even seen a PowerPoint presentation. First, Rick talked about the visiting artist program, then Mike introduced me. I guess this is it. I hope I don't f this up. I shared a few things I've learned about being an artist. I'm not going to bore you with the whole lecture, but if you ask me, I nailed it. Thank you all so much. After the lecture, I went to a gallery where all four glass grad students were having a show. The show was really interesting because almost no glass was used. It's been a long day, and I'm going to talk to the grad students about their work later this week. Right now, I'm going to get some sleep. Before I head into the glass shop, I'm going to grab some coffee and a quick smoke. I hope a good crew of students shows up today. If it goes as smooth as yesterday, we should make at least 15 to 20 boards. I can't even believe how well it went yesterday in the hot shop after not blowing glass for an entire year. Ah, now I'm ready. Not only am I feeling great, but it looks like we're going to have plenty of help in the shop today. In addition to Mike, we have two other grad students helping us out. Jonathan Swans, who was introduced to glass by renowned artist Stephen Will Powell at Center College in Louisville, Kentucky, and Shiori Abe, who originally studied glass at Joshibi University of Art Design in Tokyo, Japan. 
It doesn't take us long to find our groove and start cranking them out. After we wrapped up another great day in the hot shop, I set out to cruise around the campus and find some other artists. First, I met Diane carving a huge perfume bottle in the ceramics department. I'm almost finished with this piece, at least for the carving part. I found out that it was a collaboration with a fellow student named Nate. He made the perfume bottle, and Diane's been carving it for several weeks. Then, I ran into Kelly. I caught her at the tail end of a photo shoot, documenting a bathing suit she made out of glass and a dress made entirely of beer cans. So this is all just going to itself. You caught yourself thinking it at all? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been another great day. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. We're making some bigger work to donate to the school, which if all goes well, will help fund the next visiting artist. <laughs> day I've been waiting for. Time to gather up some big glass. I walk into the shop and see Jonathan, Mike, and Rick setting up a bigger glory hole along with Kumi Nakajima, the only glass grad student I haven't worked with yet. After they light up the glory hole, we have about an hour and then we can start working. One of the reasons I really like working big is that you have to work with a large crew. We're going to make three primary colored surfboards to donate to the glass program. The sale of these boards will help fund the next visiting artist. We're starting off with the yellow board. In theory, this should be just like making the smaller boards, except bigger, and the color is gonna make it a bit trickier. I had Mike start the piece off for me and apply all the color. I originally wanted to lay a thin piece of black cane down the center, but after discussing it with Mike, we decided to lay a thick piece of solid black glass to create a pinstripe down the center of the board. This would prove to be a disastrous mistake. I gather a couple more times, the second of which is lacking in grace. Once I had all the glass I needed, I began to shape it up and blow it out. As I watched the glass expand, I see the black stretching much faster than the yellow. If the black continues to stretch, I'll end up with a solid black tip, and at worst case scenario, if it gets too thin there, I won't be able to finish this piece. This is my nightmare. It's so thin, the shape is warping, and at this point, I'm fighting a losing battle. I finally make the decision to ditch the piece and move on to the next one. Part of it was just wanted to blow out and get all thin, and part of it was really stiff and didn't want to move at all. So, take two. Jonathan's applying the color while I rethink how to do this pinstripe. I decide to go with my original plan of drawing it on with a piece of black cane. I can already tell this is going to work way better. I decided to take one less gather on this piece so it's not as heavy and it's a little more manageable. My setup looks good. I think this should stretch out to the right shape. First I flatten it, then Mike swings it out. Time's running out and I'm not sure if we'll have enough time to start with the blue board, let alone do another yellow board. I finish up the red board. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous breaking it off. We have an hour left, so I decided to keep making clear boards for the install. I'm glad we were able to finish that red board, but I'm disappointed. This day has been exhausting. I'm heading back to the room. Tomorrow I'm gonna have a chance to sit down with Rick and the grad students. This campus is definitely beautiful. I'm going to meet up with Rick at the shop, and we're going to head over to the East-West Center and sit down with the grad students and talk about their work. On our way over, Rick and I get to talk about his history here at the university. So I think we have probably, arguably, the first design-built glass studio in the country. A studio is actually built for that purpose wow. rather than annexed on out of a derelict room or something from sculpture or ceramics. And when I came in uh, in 1980, I came from Ohio State University, I got my BFA there. I never touched glass before. In fact, I'm 
all the classes I'm teaching in class I'd never taken myself. Now there's there's eight courses in the program. Uh -huh. uh, I teach all of them. I'm a single person program. I'm kind of a master of none and a, <laughs> a, you know, okay at most of them. You really learn a lot every single day. Yeah. Just, they say if you want to learn something, teach it, and that is true. I think I learned more probably my first year, first month teaching than yeah. I ever did as a student here. I'm starting to realize that the students have it really good here. We arrive at the East West Center and find the four class grads. Where did the, the idea for the theme of this show come from? You want to talk about what it was going to be called? <laughs> yeah. Until the day before. <laughs> It was going to be called uh, Breaking Boundaries. We looked at the space and divided it into four. So there's the wall, the windows, the ceiling, and then the floor. We come up with four ideas for each space and we present it. And actually the window piece was my weakest idea that I had and we said we should do this. So having the floor of the gallery, I thought it would be interesting to figure out how to kind of critique or investigate you know, the real pedestal function within a gallery uh, and at the same time use the pedestals to make a sculpture or some sort of installation. Um, there is a little letter and bird. So a um, bird is a messenger. Then um, I want to let the participant write some letter or message or um, to the loved one for them. Then that is the trigger to recall, to let them recall the memory or person or experience that was really precious for them. It's so hard to draw a line between the future and the past because it's so fleeting. And just like, take a second and say, you know, the, the, using it as a metaphor for the infantile fetus and uh, trying to say, you know, the state of being where we don't know anything able to exist in our every moment if we're able to, to acknowledge it. It's been great to interact with a peer group of students who are here to try to develop themselves and then the faculty who are here to help steer us and guide us. It's been a great week. Tomorrow's the install and I hear it's going to rain, but hopefully we'll catch a break. Everything I've been working on this week has been leading up to the install tonight. Right now I'm going to meet up with an old friend of mine, Brett, who lives here on the island. What's going on, Flynn? What's up, bro? Ready to hit the road? Yeah. Let's, let's do, it. do it. I've known Brett for over a decade. I'm not sure what he has planned, but at the moment, I'm way more concerned about the weather for tonight's install. I think we're going to go over to the east side first, travel up the east side and go up to the north shore, check some spots out. On our way to the North Shore, we stop and get one of my favorite things to eat in Hawaii, a molasada. Hi. I got a half dozen mix. It's basically a fresh hot donut filled with custard and covered in sugar. Honestly, if I could fill up a bathtub with these things and bathe in them, I would. We get back on the road, and then it starts to rain. If this doesn't let up, I may have to cancel the installation tonight. We head back to the university, and at this point, all I can do is get the boards ready and hope we get a break in the rain. <laughs> 